the thought of uh, having a baby and you know, especially the first pregnancy is a super excitement. Anxious? I'm not sure what to expect even though I've read so much and sometimes I think I tend to over worry. I mean for most women it's a sense of uh, fulfillment to, to have, a, have a child and then complete the family. I think as a working mother it is definitely very tiring so um, sometimes I think that stress can affect our health. There's a lot of uh, body changes that's happening and whether there's really, um, is it just part of pregnancy or is there something wrong? Maybe something wrong with myself or worse even the baby. Although I'm a doctor myself, but uh, sometimes it's hard to differentiate. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Chan Wan Xian. I'm a cardiologist. Hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Lee. I'm an obstetrician at the National University Hospital. Today we're going to talk about gestational hypertension. Gestation hypertension or uh, high, high blood pressure during uh, pregnancy is one of the most uh, common medical issues uh, that women face during pregnancy. It's asymptomatic. Based on my clinical experience, it affects about 5 to 10 out of 100 pregnant women. These are women who do not have a hypertension before their pregnancy, but develop it usually from 20th week of pregnancy onwards. So it's defined when a woman has high blood pressure greater than 140 or 90 millimetres of mercury. Um, it is also known as pregnancy-induced high blood pressure. After delivery of the baby, it should go away within uh, the next two to three months. I increasingly see more pregnant women with problems such as hypertension and diabetes in my practice. These conditions can increase the risk of complications to both the mother and the baby during the pregnancy and also during the labour itself. The exact cause of gestational hypertension is not really fully understood at the moment, but we do know, based on many studies, that there are several risk factors that can increase a woman's chance of getting gestational hypertension during pregnancy. These include cardiovascular risk factors like diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, uh, or overweight uh, before pregnancy, and autoimmune conditions such as uh, lupus, underlying kidney disease, and in fact, women who are extreme of ages, such as less than 20 years old or greater than 40 years old, if they already have got uh, preeclampsia or high blood pressure uh, disorders during their previous pregnancy, a family history of gestational hypertension. So for example, if um, a patient's mother or sister had had uh, hypertension in pregnancy, uh, having twins or triplets, women who actually uh, receive assisted reproduction therapies uh, or have gone through quite a few a pregnancy, th these women are all at risk. So the diagnosis is often based on the increase in blood pressure levels. If the number that we see is more than 140 systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure more than 90, uh, then we have to be concerned to, to check this patient whether she's got gestational hypertension during the pregnancy. And uh, we can't just rely on one uh, reading, so we should actually take a second reading. Usually it's during the next uh, clinic visit or a couple of hours later. So some tests um, that we will perform if we suspect a patient has gestational hypertension, apart from blood pressure measurement, would include urine tests to check for the presence of protein. So sometimes if there is underlying immune issues or inflammatory condition or um, certain genetic issues that actually cause the blood circulatory system here to harden. This may hinder blood flow to vital organs in the expectant mother's body, such as to the liver, to the kidneys, to her brain, and to her uterus and placenta. And this can affect baby's growth. Baby tends to be a bit smaller. But on the other end, um, there's also um, an impact on the mother's health. In severe cases, uh, this can develop into preeclampsia, which can be a life-threatening condition. So preeclampsia is when the blood pressure is high and there is a protein in the urine. So preeclampsia is a more severe end of the spectrum of gestational hypertension. It's a condition that affects 3 out of 100 pregnant women and usually develops after the 20th week of pregnancy in the second half. Sometimes, it can develop after the birth of the baby. It could affect different organs. So for example, uh, the kidney uh, can be impaired, there can be kidney dysfunction, there can be liver dysfunction. Uh, blood counts, especially platelets, uh, can be affected. If it's left untreated, it can lead to eclampsia. It is the most severe form out of this high blood pressure spectrum, where the mother develops seizures, or fits, which can be life-threatening. 
Uh, at the same time, it is a condition uh, that can also affect the heart. So sometimes in preeclampsia, the diastolic um, uh, function of the heart can get affected. That's the relaxing uh, function. And it can cause uh, retention of water in the lung, usually the third trimester when it's near delivery. In some patients, uh, of course rarely, we can see a development of heart failure as well. Preeclampsia uh, can restrict blood flow to the uterus and the placenta, which supplies nutrients and oxygen to the baby. So in this case, if baby is not receiving optimal amounts of nutrients and oxygen, they tend to be on the smaller side. And it puts the women at risk of uh, preterm delivery. So symptoms that I usually advise my patients to watch for would be high blood pressure, greater than 140 or 90. Um, protein in the urine, uh, that's something that we will test for routinely at every uh, antenatal visit. But apart from that, it's really the swelling. And I think women have to be quite aware that um, swelling can come on quite suddenly in both feet and the face as well. In severe cases, mothers who have preeclampsia can experience a very bad persistent headache. Vision blurring, nausea or vomiting, severe nausea or vomiting or abdominal pain. So a specific treatment for gestational hypertension will be determined by the doctor based on, first of all, the severity of the blood pressure, the entire pregnancy as a whole, the overall health of the patient and also her medical history. Specific treatment may include medication to control blood pressure and that is usually very safe for both mummy and baby. Testing for presence of the protein in urine is very important because that will help us to rule out preeclampsia. Other blood tests may also be performed to ensure that there are no other complications to the vital organs, such as to the liver and the kidneys. And lastly, we also want to ensure well-being of the baby, um, and that will usually be in the form of an ultrasound scan to estimate baby's weight. As for preeclampsia, um, we have to be more aggressive in our monitoring of the pregnancy and treatment because the condition is usually more severe and has um, a greater impact on both the mother and the child. So the goal of treatment is to prevent the condition from becoming worse and also to intervene in a timely manner if we suspect the condition is about to progress to the most severe form, eclampsia. Unfortunately, in severe cases where if despite treatment, the condition of mother and baby worsens, delivery of the baby will be the only option. And this tends to be via a caesarean section. We have seen women at higher risk of developing high blood pressure, what we call hypertension, um, at least five times more than the general population. Uh, not just uh, hypertension, at the same time, uh, the risk of developing cardiovascular conditions like uh, coronary artery disease, uh, heart attack, uh, stroke, and heart failure in the long term will also be much higher uh, in ladies who have got um, gestational hypertension during pregnancy. In fact, it's about two times more than the general population. It is actually very important uh, for women with gestational hypertension to seek uh, to see a cardiologist uh, review uh, early. We usually work together with the gynecologist to actually manage the blood pressure issue and at the same time uh, monitor the patient closely during the pregnancy um, and also after the delivery. We advocate that uh, it's important to go for a preconception screening. So if there is uh, any medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure um, or weight issues, we need to uh, pick it up early and then uh, manage, uh, treat and monitor this group of patients uh, quite closely. Yeah. And then um, even in patients who don't have all this, uh, do not have all these medical conditions, uh, it is important before uh, conception to also um, uh, have a heart-healthy lifestyle. That will include um, maintaining a healthy weight range, um, exercising and also maintaining a balanced diet. So lots of vegetables, cut down on animal saturated fats. Actually, we advise women to maintain a BMI of between 18 to 23. So either being underweight or overweight would not be ideal. During pregnancy, the optimal weight gain depends on what the pre-pregnancy weight or BMI is. For someone who is quite uh, average uh, of a healthy weight, then I think the average weight gained uh, advice is about 13 to about 16 kilograms. Exercise in pregnancy is very important. Some light cardiovascular exercise such as walks, 
runs and swimming. Swimming is a really good one because it takes the pressure off the joints. So if we could do that um, at least uh, three to five times a week, each time about half an hour, that, that, would be, that would be good. But I know it's definitely not easy to achieve in pregnancy all the time, especially in the first trimester when women may suffer from nausea and tiredness. So I encourage them, I usually encourage my patients to do whatever they can, but at least, you know, to get up, to move, to go out for some fresh air, <laughs> perhaps, uh, and definitely take some walks. With adequate sleep, um, overall health uh, in terms of metabolism of the body system actually uh, improve. So if we have adequate sleep issues with uh, blood pressure, sugar and weight actually actually improve. So pregnant women who have risk factors for developing preeclampsia, such as the extreme of ages that we spoke about, someone who has um, a BMI of above 35, someone with pre-existing conditions such as high blood pressure and diabetes, Studies have shown that women would benefit from a low dose of aspirin starting from the 12th week of pregnancy. This can greatly reduce the risk of them developing preeclampsia later on in the pregnancy. So based on my personal experience, I think pregnancy is it's always challenging whether it's the first, the second or the third time. And there are just so many changes that a woman has to deal with, not only physically but also emotionally and mentally. So I think the key is that um, if there's any concern, unusual symptoms during the pregnancy process, uh, don't hesitate to see uh, a doctor or your gynaecologist as soon as possible so that it can be picked up early. I think um, we should take it easy and sometimes just be kind and forgiving to ourselves, especially if we are a working mother or if we have other children at home to take care of as well. To mothers who have a slightly complicated pregnancy, I think it's a very natural reaction to worry, but I often tell my patients that together we can overcome one hurdle at a time. And the saying, um, you know, it's very true that a happy mother will lead to a happy and have a healthy baby as well. Yep.